And lunch? No. You need lunch. Uh, compound angles. I'll write it here again, okay? Compound angles. Yep. Now, there are six formulas that you need. I usually do the proof of the formulas, but there are proofs of trigonometry formulas in the exam. Um, but the pro these proofs and how you do these proofs are not really on the exam, so I think I won't do them this year. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, but there are there are trigonometry proofs, yeah. and the reason I did these proofs was for you to practice trigonometry mm -hmm. proofs. However, yeah, are you listening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, the way you prove these formulas is not really a method for the exam. So I'll just give you the formulas. You can easily look up the proofs online if you want to see them. But you can't escape the fact that there are things to prove. Like with the vectors, there are things to prove in the exam. Okay? So you can't avoid that, Mr. Reef. You got that? You sure? All right. Don't look too happy about it. Uh, okay, so the first one. You might think that sine A plus B might equal something like, but it's not, something like sine A plus sine B. You might think that could be a formula for it. But of course life is not that easy. It's not like this. It's not too different, but it's not as simple as this. The formula for sine A plus B is sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. So it's, it's nearly that, except you have this cos B cos A included. Now, um, I lied when I said I wouldn't do the proofs. Uh, I'll do the proofs for one of the six, because the way I'm going to prove one of them is kind of like what you might need to do in the exam. Okay, let me give you the next formula. Be pleased to know it's quite simple. So, yeah, sine A minus B is sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. So that's good news. You got that one? Have a guess at what's next. Cos A plus B equals cos A cos B. What's next, do you think? Oh, uh, yeah. Funny, this one is opposite. Minus. I did not, absolutely. Cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. And then here, when it's cos A minus B, it's cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. You got that? Yeah? Now, I'll say this, I said it already, but I'll say it again. You listen? There are proofs on the, in the exam on this chapter, but usually the proofs, like in vectors, are things, to prove things you haven't seen before. What's a little bit nicer here is that you prove 
their formula by using formulas you already know. So a good example, a good example is I'm going to use these formulas, which we know, to prove a new formula for can a plus b. Get, get what I'm saying? So let's have a look at that. So I want a formula for tan a plus b. Well, you know tan is sine over cos. So tan a plus b would be sine a plus b over cos a plus b. Make sense so far? Mm -hmm. And you have formulas for these. Mm -hmm. So this will be, yeah, sine a cos b plus sine b cos a, and this one here is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Yeah, now, yes? Oh, so sorry. Minus sine a sine b, thank you. Now, to simplify this, what I'll do is I'll divide everything by cos a cos b. So I'll get this really big fraction now. There will be this one plus this one, this one minus this one, and you have a cos a cos b is dividing everything. So everything else is the same. Sine a cos b plus sine b cos a over cos a cos b sine a sine b. Now if you look at what happens here, um, we can cancel, I'll do it in red, uh, blue, cancel the cos b with cos b. Um, I can cancel the cos a with the cos a. I can cancel the cos b cos a cos a cos b. And I can cancel nothing here. But um, what's sine A over cos A? Tan A. Sine B over cos B? Sine A over cos A? And this one? So this one becomes tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. So you've changed this into this. Now before you write that down, the other possibility is minus. If you put a minus here, the only difference is these are minuses, which change this term minus and this term plus, this term minus, this term plus, this term minus, this term plus. Actually, I should, re technically speaking, because I wrote the second possibility underneath, I should write it underneath as well. So. Uh, that becomes uh, a minus, that becomes a plus, that becomes a minus, that becomes a plus, that becomes a minus, and that becomes a plus. So we have the formula tan A plus or minus B is tan plus or minus tan, and then the opposite sign on the bottom, 1 minus or plus tan tan. Okay, so this is the proof. A good one to write down, so I would like everything written down here. How's my battery doing? Oh, okay.
I'm not sure if you've done this formula before. You remember it, yeah? Yes, yeah, you've seen this before? Yeah. What's the coffee? Nice. Starbucks don't do student discounts, do they? I don't think so. Okay, let me know when you're ready and we'll look at how to use these formulas. You're ready? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mishri? Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Mishri? Is that a yes? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. Continue it. Um, yes. Okay. So, you would have seen this in semester one, and if not, I might have mentioned it in semester two, although I don't remember saying it. Uh, you have these two important triangles, which I expect you to know, but sometimes in the exam they don't expect you to know it, so they give you this information in the question, and sometimes they don't, so I don't know. Um, but anyways, I expect you to know this. You have a triangle which is 45 degrees here, 90, this side is 1, this side is 1, this side is root 2. And then this other triangle where this one is a 60, this one is a 30, this one's a two, 1, a 2, and a root 3. So on this triangle you can say sine 45, cos 45, tan 45, that's equal to 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. And in fact, if you forgot this, you can actually check it on your calculator. Oh, sorry, thank you, Mr. Reef, I got carried away. 1. Uh, sine 60, cos 60, tan 60, sine 30, cos 30, tan 30. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2, cos 60 is 1 over 2, 1 over 2, and tan 60 is root 3 over 1. Sine 30 is 1 over 2, cos 30 is root 3 over 2, and tan 30 is 1 over root 3. You should know either these triangles, but if you don't know these triangles, then you should know either these formulas. In other words, you need to know either the triangles or these facts. I don't, I can't remember it like this. I have to draw the triangle to make it. So you should either know star or double star. You can take these as facts. Um, like I said, the triangles are how I remember them. Because uh, I always mix up the 60s and the 30s here. You got that? Yeah? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> got that? Yes. Okay. Let me give you an example of using the formula here. A type of question they might have in the exam is, without using your calculator, calculate sine 15 degrees, without using the calculator, as an example. So you could say, well, I can't use my calculator, but I can use my formulas. Sine 15 is the same as uh, sine 60 minus 45. And then you can say, well, sine 60 minus sine 45 is sine 60 cos 45 minus sine 45 
uh, cos 60. Sine 60 is uh, root 3 over 2, 1 over root 2, minus 1 over root 2, uh, cos 60 is 1 over 2. So this is 2 root 2, root 3 minus 1. I should simplify this by multiplying the top and bottom by what? Minus yeah, minus 2 root 2, minus 2 root 2, the conjugate. We did it in semester, you did it in semester 1, allegedly. <laughs> right, so this is equal to minus 2 root 3 root 2, plus 2 root 2, all over minus 4 times root 2 root 2, ah, which is minus 2 root 6 plus 2 root 2 over minus 4 times 2. What's in common here? You can see there's a 2 in everything. So you're left with root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Now if I take out my calculator and hit in sine 15 degrees, will it match? Um, I screwed up on my signs. Oh, sorry, forgot there's a minus here, which then makes it equal to root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Yes. Okay. So this is an exam type of question. Uh, let me give you one to try. Uh, try, when you're ready, uh, we'll go with tan 75 degrees. No, maybe. Uh, tan 105 degrees. Yeah. When you're ready, try this one. Problem out now? I might help. Okay. I can do stupid questions too, you know. I know, <laughs> no, I know, I know, but that's part of being a teacher. Okay, can you try this one? Can 105. You need to change it into plus or minus two angles that you do know. Yeah. This is a lot smarter than he looks, you know. What? He yeah, doesn't have faith in you? No, he's just smarter than me. That's not going to smell.
take the I want to make the conjugate for one minus root three so it will be root three minus one. Uh what is it one minus root three? Okay. Then that's one plus root three. One yes. Yeah. Ah, no. Who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Who? Mm -hmm. The GF? No. No? Mm -hmm. See, I'm down with the lingo. <laughs> <laughs> I know the terms. Yeah. Uh, right. Can I do this one now? Yes, please. Right. Or do you not use labels such as girlfriend now? Would that not be how you feel? No. Because remember, this is recorded now, so anything you say will be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a look at this one. So we have to use the formula that we proved earlier, which is tan 60 plus tan 45 over 1 minus tan 60 tan 45. Uh, what did we say tan 60 was? Uh, root 3? Wasn't it? Or was it 1 over root 3? don't remember now. Root 3. Okay, that's good. So that's root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus root 3, as you were saying. So we should multiply the top by 1 plus root 3 and the bottom by 1 plus root 3. So on the top we get root 3 by 1, which is root 3. Root 3 by root 3, which is 3. 1 by 1 is 1 and 1 by root 3 is root 3. And on the bottom we get 1 plus root 3 minus root 3 minus 3. Um, that was a minus there. So they cancel. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So on the top I have 4 plus 2 root 3. Uh, I can divide everything by 2. So I'm left with minus 2 minus root 3 in the end. Let's check that. I don't know if my calculator can do tan 105. Yes, it is correct. Okay. A couple of more types to look at now. So that was kind of a... These are kind of a warm-up questions that you can get in the exam, which is good. Uh, but now, the more common is the next type I'm going to do. Can I go back to the... Yeah. So, just before I do that, uh, a circle for you. A little bit of terminology. Uh, this is the angle from 0 to 90. What do we call angles that are uh, 0 to 90? Charmed. Charmed. You know, uh, you're not too far away. Not cute. <laughs> not cute. <laughs> not cute. <laughs> so, uh, this one here is called acute. Little translation. Not the same. No. Zero and ninety. Close. Yeah. And then ninety is called a 
right angle. 90 to 180? <laughs> uh, wait, uh, obtuse. obtuse. And then what about um, here, 180 to 360, the last two? That's called reflex. Oh? Yeah. Now. This is a direct translation. Is it direct translation? No. Close. No. no. Oh, and I call this... Well, yeah, reflexive. Reflexive? Yeah. Okay. Respond, kind of, yeah. Uh, Q, this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Now, A, S, T, C. So any angle between zero and 90, all of sine, cos, and tan will be positive. So for example, Sine 45, cos 45, tan 45. I know they'll all be positive. In the next quadrant, only sine will be positive. Cos and tan of angles in here will be negative. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive, whereas the other two will have negative values. And in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. The other two will have negative values. You gave up. No, I have to use this circle no. now. I can't avoid it. So, um, if you can copy this circle, um, we'll use the circle with the formulas to solve new problems. So, can you write this down? Yeah. Uh -huh. The one I learned in school is all students take care. <laughs> what did he say? With all due respect, that's very nerdy. <laughs> Sex <laughs> in the. <laughs> it's a different. <laughs> well, what's the A? And. And. Um, the. See, you're getting. Even, even in English, side. Sex and the uh, city. He said not A because and is. Uh, proposition you have to use. So like yeah. even, yeah. even in English you're a genius. Okay. Oh, well, no, I can't take credit for that one. That's the one my high school teacher used, so that's what I still use. All students okay. take care. It doesn't <laughs> Sex and the city. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, about, well, you probably have something in Arabic equivalent to remember it. Yeah. No! <laughs> what does it translate <laughs> as? <laughs> Every injustice. What's that? Every injustice, like a. Yeah, a yeah, every. The yeah. Will die? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as uh, aggressive as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Arabs, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Even your maths is aggressive. <laughs> All right. Oh uh, we'll have a look at how to use this one now. Yeah. Can I scroll down? Okay. So, just so you know, these types here, they're really, really, really common in section A. If I think about it, when the trigonometry question comes up in section A, it's like 75% chance it'll be one of these questions in section A. So as an example, um, I don't think I'll do it, um, I think I made them all acute for this lesson, but yeah, okay, I'll do one that's 17 is a good one because it looks at a few possibilities. If I tell you A is acute, B is acute, A is acute, B is reflex and so on. So can you just note this and then the question is find cos A plus B. Okay, so just write this part down. If you have this sine A is 3 fifths, cos B is 5 thirteenths, find cos A plus B. You have that? Okay. Uh, so what is sine A? 
Shreya for five. And Kospi? Five over thirteen. Huh? Five over thirteen. Five over thirteen. So we'll draw a... I start by telling you, so the first possibility is if A is acute, which means it's in which quadrant? Yeah. Zero to ninety, quadrant one is what I call it, and B is acute, which means it's in quadrant one as well. Uh, so if you look at the circle, um, angle A is going to be somewhere in quadrant one, and angle B is in quadrant one as well. And we want cos uh, A plus B? Yeah, cos a plus b. So how could I get cos a plus b? Well, I could use the formula, which is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Now, here's the problem. I give you sine a and cos b. So we know sine a and we know cos b. What we don't know is cos a and what we don't know is sine b. Let's start with cos a. If I tell you sine A is 3 fifths, we need a way to find cos A. We can use, huh? We could draw a triangle and... No, no, yeah. You have two possibilities. The triangle and the formula you've given me. In the exam, they kind of prefer you to use the formula for this one than the triangle. Although the triangle is acceptable. Um, the formula is, a, is kind of what they want here. So the formula is, you might remember, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. You remember this one? So <coughs> you can say cos A equals square root 1 minus sine squared A. So in this case, cos A will be 1 minus 9 over 25, which would be 4 over 5. Something that you can get from the triangle. But what you can't get from the triangle is the fact that there's actually two possibilities here. And we have to make a choice. Do we choose the plus or do we choose the minus for cos A? Well, we need to remember which quadrant it's in, the first quadrant. So should it be a plus or a minus? It should be a plus. So we choose the plus. This will be 4 fifths times cos B, which I've... Uh, 5 thirteen minus, now sine A, which is given 3 fifths, now sine B, there'll be no surprise here when I tell you that it'll be 12 13 and for the same reason as here, we have to take it as a plus, so we end up with a 20 mi minus 36 over 65, which is minus 16 over 65, so wait, before you write this down, uh, which quadrant could this be in? The final answer, the cos a, the a plus b. Is a plus b in the first quadrant? No, because if it was, it should be positive. Is it in the second quadrant? Could be, because only sine is positive here, so it could be here. Uh, third quadrant? Could be here, and no, because cos is back to positive here. So. If you don't need to, but it's it's good to note that A plus B, we think, is also somewhere in quadrant 2 and 3, so it's bigger than 90, uh, no, sorry, not quadrant 2, uh, 3, and, no, 2 and 3 is what we said, yeah, a second ago, uh, 270, okay. I want you to write this down, and then I want you to try the next one in a moment. It's the same question, but this time I tell you, a is acute and B is reflex. What is the value of cos A plus B? We'll finish with that one. Do you have class at 11? Well, then I'll just do it and you can write it down as I'm doing it.
Can I scroll down to the uh, next one? Yeah. Okay. Yes? Right. I'll do this one. Of course, you, you should really practice some of these at home as well, but... Um, oh, what did I say it was? 12, no, 5 over 13, wasn't it? So this is how I would do it in the exam. The very first thing I would do is write down the things I will need that they didn't give me. So in red, that I'll need cos A and I'll need uh, sine B. Using the square root formula again, I know that this will be 4 fifths and this will be 12 thirteenths. However, what I don't know, or by using the triangle, if it's a plus or a minus, or if it's a plus or a minus, a quick check of my circle will tell me. All students, take care. A is acute. It's in the first quadrant, so both sine and cos should be positive. So I choose the positive here and reject the negative. B is reflex, which means it's in one of these quadrants. But you can figure out which one it is because cos B is positive. So it's not in the third quadrant. Why not? The cos should be negative. So I've worked out, even though I told you it's reflex and it could be in this or this, because I've also given you this, you can conclude that it is in the fourth quadrant. So what is the sign in the fourth quadrant, a positive or a negative? Uh, no, negative. Yeah. But you realize even if it was in the third quadrant, it still makes you choose the negative for sign because sign will be negative in the third quadrant anyways. So, now that we have this, we can simply calculate it. Cos A plus B is cos A uh, sign B minus uh, cos B uh, sine A I hope I got that right that will be all over 65 minus 48 I got that right didn't I? Uh, cos A plus B is cos A cos A, oh sorry thank you I got it wrong um, right let's try this again mm -hmm. cos A cos B mm -hmm. minus sine A, sine B. Okay, we're happy with that now? Yeah. yeah. So this is all over 65, 20 plus 36, which is 56 over 65. Uh, which quadrant is A plus B in, by the way? Uh, it could be in the first quadrant, because cost is positive there. Or it could be in the fourth quadrant, so A plus B is somewhere between um, yeah. no, 90 to 70, uh, I suppose technically I could write it as minus 90 to 90 because going back here is negative angles like for example 350 is the same as minus 10 mm. yeah so you don't have to write this in your answer for the exam uh, in the exam you get full marks for getting to here but I, I'm just trying to get you to think a, a lot about the circle and which things are in which quadrants um, there is there is one last question here which I'll do the next time you don't this one isn't really on the exam but it's a in semester one, you didn't have any way of adding cos and sine together because they're two different things. But what we'll learn is now we'll have a way to combine cos and sine into one. In semester one, you couldn't do this. Cos and sine couldn't be combined because they're separate things. You know, it's like combining x and y. You can't put them together. But using compound angles, we can. So number 19 was an interesting one. Um, but you should be able to do 1 to 18, that's what we've covered now. Alright, we'll leave it there.